Hi, my name is Amberly, and I have the privilege of serving as one of our executive pastors here at Transformation Church. We just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are watching from. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word for you. So let's jump into this amazing message. All right, today we are starting week two of a series we're calling Kingdom Couples and the tagline is probably the most important part. I need everybody to understand this is not just about having a Beyonce, Jay-Z like marriage relationship. Like this is not for a stunt or a flex. This is not so that people can think you're good. This is about doing kingdom business with kingdom partners. And the truth of the matter is most of us do not reach our purpose, not because we don't have it, it's because we don't pick the right partners. And I feel like I have a burden for everybody to understand that you need to learn how to pick partners for purpose, on purpose. Say it with me. For purpose, on purpose. With your chest. For purpose. Why? On The truth of the matter is most of our relationships that are deep came because of proximity. They were not our picks. And today, I need us to evaluate everything so that we can see how to do it the king's way. Finding partners for purpose, on purpose. And I got to stop and say this because I'm a pastor of a local church. The truth of the matter is there are so many people in our church that have decided to be partners for purpose, transformation in Christ on purpose here at Transformation Church. And this week we had a volunteer rally where over 230 people came to the volunteer rally. Y'all can clap better than that. And we had over 79 B groups sign up for this season. Come on, y'all. These are people who have decided, I want to be connected to something bigger than me. And I just want to give everybody a key to life. You will never be fully fulfilled if you're not connected to something bigger than you. Oh, God. It's how he made us. He made us to steward over here but be connected to something that we could never do by ourselves. And many of you are not seeing the color of your life because everything in your life is right. It just don't move outside of you. Body bad. Friend group fly. Housing sleep. Model. You got everything except why does it still feel empty? Because all of that means nothing if it's not connected to something that's outside of you. And so church, what I'm trying to tell you is in the kingdom, the currency is relationship, connection, partnership. And if you are not partnering to do something bigger than what you could do alone, I may suggest to you that your vision is too small. I'm going to say this because I know a lot of people are just trying to maintain, but may I suggest to you God's plan for you was not to maintain. The word maintain, I kind of have a problem with it because maintain literally means to nurse to death. That word maintain means I'm going to keep it going as much as I can, but I know all the time it's going down. And God's saying, I don't want you to maintain. I don't want you to just survive. I want you to thrive. But it has to be connected to the right people. So I want you to go to our anchor scripture of this entire series, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two people are better than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Last week we decided we need a partner. How many people know that there are more people in their life that they need to reach the purpose that God has given for them to reach? Okay, so we've decided we need a partner. But I don't want 
us to just have a partner. I want us to have a partner with power. Like a partner with no power is weight. Okay, let me start over here. It, if, if I'm dragging you along, if you don't have the ability to add anything to this, if you're not helping us move this thing forward, you have become a weight and you're actually slowing me down. So you have the title of partner, but you're putting on pounds. There's no power with what you're doing. We have to not be okay. We have to literally change the thought process in our relationships because we're going to do it the king's way. There has to be people that are helping us move forward. That means they got to have some power. So today, I'm going to teach you how to pick a partner, but this is what I want you to understand. The path to powerful partnership is in the pick. Okay. I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm going to put it on the screen. The path to powerful partnership. When we link up, things change. When we come together, watch out. When, you, when I step in with them, have y'all ever walked into a room and you didn't know nobody, so it made you kind of timid? But did you walk in with the person who's throwing the party? It's a whole different swag. You sit down different. Okay. But the power is not just in having a partner. Watch this. It's in the pick. Okay. I'm going to take everybody to maybe a traumatic situation in your childhood. Or maybe you never really experienced it. But have you ever been in line to be picked for a game? And like they line everybody up against the wall. And then you just standing there rocking it. And like, Jim, it's like, oh, yeah, I would have picked Jim too. I would have picked Jim too. <laughs> and like, Sally, and it's like, all right. <laughs> and then you just. It, it, it's one of like a child's greatest fears is to stand in that line and not be picked. But on the other side of it, whoever the captains are, know that the difference between a loss and a win is in who they pick. And some of us have been picking people who can't play the game of purpose we're in. But you feel bad for them because they're still on the wall. Oh, gosh. And they sitting there like, you're not going to pick me. We've been friends since sixth grade, but you haven't developed since sixth grade. You stopped reading in sixth grade. You're still emotionally at sixth grade. You get mad at me when I can't come. I got four kids. Okay, let me stop. That sounded personal. But the difference between a win and a loss is the what? Pick. So the, the title of today's sermon is how to pick a partner. It don't, it don't matter if we know we need one because some of our pickers are broken. Uh-oh. Yo, picker broke. <laughs> that sounds provocative. I don't know why. Why don't you broke pickle? <laughs> I like it. The truth of the matter is, how do we keep getting in business with the wrong type of people? They always shady. They always shysty. I'm on my fourth marriage. And it's always them. Ain't no man serious. Don't no man really want to be a man or good. <laughs> But you have a very distinct type. And there were three dudes that came at you that don't look like your type, but would treat you like a queen. And you've allowed your preference to 
erode your pick? Okay. We, I'm just, I'm, I'm treading lightly, okay? But I need you to know how to pick a partner. Ladies, I'm about to tell you how to pick your man. Help, I'm about to help. She said, help me, pastor. <laughs> Fellas, I'm about, to t I'm about to tell you how to pick your wife, okay? Entrepreneurs, I'm about to give you the keys to pick the right business partners. College student, I'm going to help you pick lifelong friendships, okay? I, I can feel the hate coming right now. <laughs> no, I can't because some of y'all are sitting next to a bad pick. <laughs> and and <laughs> it's the truth anyhow. She's like, Jim, is that me? He's like, oh, no, no, it's not. I do not know. What I'm saying to you is, this is important because, watch this, Jesus picked his partners. Think about it. Everybody think the disciples just came out of nowhere and was riding with Jesus. But how different would the gospel be right now all over the world if Jesus would have picked the wrong partners. Write it down, because I don't think y'all have ever seen this like this. Jesus picked his partners. And I, there's this stigma in church that, like, come as you are. And it's like, yes, but then you have to continue to transform. And so a lot of times what I found being the CEO of a church and then being the pastor of a church, like there's like the church business side of it that like people get jobs and paid and stuff. And then there's like the ministry part of it. We confuse the fact that just because I'm here at the church and I want to serve means that I should work in the church business. You're not good. Uh oh, I'm, I need to watch out. What I'm saying to you is this idea that everybody gets a, a cloak of grace because it's about God. I'm trying to, I see the, the haters are watching right now. They've got their pens and they read. They, I'm trying to say it with tact. Um, can I be hot? Can I be humble, open and transparent today? Okay. You can love God and not be a good pick. You can work in the church and not be a good pick. You can do Bible study every day and not be a good pick. You can be a pastor and not be a good pick. So that means we have to be picky with our pick. Who gets the level of access to you? Who gets to see you hurt? Who gets to see you vulnerable? Now, I know some of y'all is like, that's why I don't show nobody nothing. You're damaged. <laughs> Let me be very clear. You went to the other extreme. Nobody even knows your birthday. And then you're mad at everybody. Nobody said nothing about my birthday. We didn't know. We had no idea. You didn't even post on Instagram like another year around the sun. We don't know. You're mean and shut up. And we want to be your friend, but bah. Y'all know them people. <laughs> I see two of them looking at me like this right now. Like, I got you. I just want everybody to think about it. Jesus healed a lot of people. Jesus traveled with a lot of people. But he picked only a few partners. Okay, I'm going to show you. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. One day soon after Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. So he's coming out of prayer. Okay, watch this. And he prayed to God all night. He knew this was big decision right here. His, his partner pick was preceded by prayer. Okay, it's not even a point. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples. Watch this. And he chose 12 of them to be apostles. Here are their names. Watch this. Tons of disciples. He picked the apostles. He picked his partners. He picked the ones that he was going to put his name next to. Tons of 
disciples, tons of Facebook followers, tons of fans, tons of all the crowd. But he said, my name is only going to be associated with a few people. And I'm not going to let somebody pawn them off on me. I'm going to pick them. Somebody say, I got to pick them. Okay. All right, here we go. And then I love this. Then he says their names. They weren't silent partners. <sighs> they weren't partners that would not be mentioned and held accountable. Many of us have partnerships with people in secret, in the dark. Nobody even knows we're that close. And God's saying for the partners that are going to do kingdom work, they have to be named, visible, associated with. If you can't post them on your Instagram, if you can't take them to your mama's house, if you can't introduce, if your boss can't see you out with them. He says, um, my partners are Simon, who's named Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother. He is making, and Kate, because there's a bunch of Andrews. Because there's a bunch of people who do graphics. Because there's a bunch of people who live on the north side, like. He was being specific. Andrew, Peter's brother. No, not DeMonte's brother, Peter's brother. James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James. No, 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 you know um, Alphesis. Alphesis, that's a name. That's that's A-Rod's son. Simon, y'all know they call him the zealot, yeah. Judas, son of, no, James down at the corner store, that's his son. And Judas Iscariot, who would later betray him. (laughs) But, oh, see, this is going to mess some of y'all theology up. Was Judas a bad pick? See, some of y'all done read, y'all like, forget Judas, but hold on. Jesus picked Judas because he knew that at some point Judas would flip on him and he would be the catalyst to Jesus fulfilling his purpose. (laughs) Cameraman, look at me. I could go home now. (laughs) That See, because some of us have gotten hung up because we made a wrong pick. Everybody has told us we made a wrong. Can we be honest? How many people have made a wrong relational pick before? Just, oh, we're in a, oh, God, thank you. We're in the right place. Okay. This is my encouragement to you. Write this down. God can redeem the wrong pick for purpose. God can redeem the wrong pit and make it turn around for purpose. He can change this whole thing. And that's why I'm glad that Jesus, he didn't pick perfect partners. He didn't pick prolific partners. He didn't pick positioned partners, but he picked partners for purpose. Somebody say, I'm going to pick partners for purpose. Say it again. I'm going to pick partners for purpose. Okay, so I'm going to give you three things that I found to actually be like um, a a guide to how you can pick some powerful partners in your life. Okay, powerful partners have mastered the art of the pump up. If you a good partner, you know how to pump. Can I say it in another way? You are a great encourager. If you gonna be a good partner, you got to be a bomb encourager. Y'all ever met those people that you having a bad day and they come in and they're like, dang, you look good. You're like, this old thing? And they're like, I don't know, is you doing something new with your skin? And they're like, I mean, distilled water, I think. 
And they just, they just have a way of coming into an atmosphere and calling out the greatness in you. The truth of the matter is the church should be the billboard for the pump up. And we have become the poster child for discouragement. You want somebody to tear you down? Do something in front of church people. Make a mistake. Do something everybody don't agree. They will rip you to shreds and then blame Jesus. And First Thessalonians it says, <laughs> and many times all that does is identify that ain't my partner. They sure can't go where I'm going. They definitely not built for the altitude we're supposed to rise to. If you're going to be or find a partner that's going to rock with you, they got to have mastered the pump up. Okay, let me give you scripture because uh, some of y'all are sitting here looking at me and you're so discouraged, not because you don't think you can do it, but there's not enough people telling you that you can. There are statistics and studies that have been done that it takes 17 positive affirmations to cancel out every one negative word. Now think about all the words that have been spoken over you in your life and then think about the ones you speak over yourself. Tell me, could there be anybody who's doing too much when it comes to encouragement? No. You need people around you that tell you that you can do it every day. You need people that send it in the text today. You are mighty and God's hand is on your life. Be strong and courageous. If it falls apart, I'm going to be here. We down like four flats. I'm going to ride this thing till the wheels fall off. Whatever you need, they are there to encourage you. And it's not until you find yourself in a pit that you find out who actually has. Because a lot of people go silent. When I've gone through certain trials, a lot of people didn't say bad things. They did worse. They said nothing. How the heck you going to stand with me on the mountaintop? But then when we get to the valley... It's not that you have bad things to say. You're waiting to see what the majority says to figure out where you stand. You not my partner. <laughs> I need the people that can find me in the dumps. And even when I don't believe it, they'll speak life over me. My wife can say something to me and make me do something I hate because she got the power of the pumper. I was walking by carrying some bags the other day, and she said, you look strong. I said, girl, I will bust down and give you 50 right next. What you, what you got? I wasn't ready for that last one. A real partner who's mastered the pump up can make you do what you think you can't do. They will give you courage. They will put courage in. That's why they call it in. And I'm afraid that many of us are looking for these partners but won't be them. Because everybody like, yeah, they need to encourage me. They need to pull me up. They need to... But when's the last time you sent a random text message to somebody who would kind of be awkward that they saw your call, but you just felt led to encourage them, to lift them up? Do they have to be saved to encourage them? Because they don't want to condone unbelievers. Shut up. And tell them they look nice. Part of the reason we have no entrance into people's lives to be even able to give them a different perspective is because we're not even in their lives. And I'm telling you, the surefire way to get into anybody's life is keep encouraging them. 
Man, how you're on time every day, that's inspiring. You look shiny. What is that? <laughs> he said, you look shiny. <laughs> Somebody going to feel good after that. Somebody, well, you know what? I am shiny. I put on cocoa butter this morning. They go, Somebody. That's a perfect example that it don't even have to make sense. <laughs> you can encourage somebody and it makes no sense. You look shiny like it is. Somebody's going to be like, you know what? Today somebody told me I'm shining. But I want you to see that could change the trajectory of somebody's entire day. Okay, let me give you scripture. Ephesians chapter 429. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let, let me stop. Because most people only use this to talk about cussing. But may I submit to you the most foul language is not cussing. It's when you tell the truth with no love and you tear people down. You can call me whatever, but I know who I am. But when you start talking about me in a way that tears down at the fabric of my soul, that is more foul and abusive language than any expletive. Now, I'm not telling you to cuss, but I'm saying some of y'all don't cuss and you're more abusive with your language. I can feel the heat. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say, how much of what you say? I said, how much of what you say? It's not 90-10. It's not 90% of what I say should be good and 10%, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let them have it. Let everything you say be Good. And it seems like many of us are going to be walking around playing the silent game. Because if everything we say has to be good and helpful, that means many of us, the conclusion is shut up. Not shut up, shut up. So, watch this, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Another translation says, so that your words will build up. My words should be blocks in people's faith journey that allow them to have the courage to do what's hard to do. You're called. You're amazing. You're built for this. God will equip you. You have the face for it. You have the voice for that. It don't even have to be fully true. Like, 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 hear what I'm saying to you. Like, you can, faith is speaking those things that are, Bishop encouraged me to step into leadership. I was not a good leader. I was not a good preacher. I was not. But I know he came out for hearing me preach for four hours of nonsense at So Fly. And he would come up to me and be like, Pastor Mike, that was one of the best messages I ever heard. <laughs> and I'm sitting there completely confused because I know it was horrible. But sometimes it kept me from going home and quitting. Oh, my God. You would have never heard of me had I not been encouraged. Okay. Do you have people in your life that know how to pump you up? Somebody said a few. How many people need some more people in your life? Okay, I'm talking to the right people. Okay. I just want you to know that this is important when you're picking a partner. If everything they say is negative, they're not going to be able to help you when it gets bad. And Jesus was the master of the pump-up. You know how cold Jesus was at the pump-up? He 
would look at people and be like, yeah, what's your name? Simon? Yeah, nah. <laughs> nah, you don't look like no Simon to me. <laughs> <sighs> I think I'm going to call you from now on uh, Peter. <laughs> you look like a Peter. And bros was like, cool. I need you to think about somebody coming up to you today and being like, your mom is no longer Keisha, it's Rachel. And you've been like, okay. Like, <laughs> but see, the real power of it is when you find out what it means. Simon, that name literally means reed or a weak plant by water. He said, your whole life you've been called weak. So every time they speak over you, Simon, Simon, Simon. They're saying, weak, 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 weak. <sighs> That's not what I see in you. Well, it's how I feel. It's not what I see. I'm going to call you Peter, which means rock, which means the exact opposite. I'm about to preach this thing. The exact opposite of what you've been called your whole life. The exact opposite of what you've been feeling and taking on. Jesus said, I am a master of pumping you up. And on that revelation that the rock gave me, I'm going to build my. Could he have built it on the revelation of Simon who didn't see himself in the way that God sees him? And what I'm telling you is if you're going to get the right people in your life, you got to get people who have mastered the art of pump up. Write this down. Encouragement is easy. It just has to be intentional. You walk with me, cameraman. Let's, let's go. I need to show them practically how this happens. Come on. Yeah. Because y'all think this is hard. And what I'm saying to you is that it's easy. Woman of God, you've been faithful. And God has seen all of your tears. Thank you for still being here and having joy. God is going to use you to touch so many people's lives. And I believe that you're going to be a gifted giver. God's going to show you people in the mall, in the grocery store, and he's going to give you resources to bless people that have never, ever resourced or seen the love of God. You continue to keep a good heart because God's going to bless you. Amen. Amen. Easy. It's easy. What's your name? Elise. Elise, you're gifted. I don't know what you do, but you're gifted. And your gift is about to make a lot of room for you. Like, I don't know what you do, but all I'm saying is whatever you do, you do it. And when you do it, you do it well. Keep doing it. You're going to inspire a lot of people to do it. It's. It just has to be intentional. And too many of us are holding back the superpower that God's given us to encourage people because we're scared of what they think. Oh, probably because we don't think it about ourselves. So I'm not going to give away what I feel like nobody's giving. Stop looking scared. She ain't even looking at me. <laughs> Maybe he won't see me if I look awkwardly. What's your name? Roshana? Man, you have a spirit of joy and peace. I can sense it when I'm just touching your hand. There, you make people feel comfortable. And because you make people feel comfortable, people just tell you their business. They tell you their business. They look at it. She said, yeah, they always be telling me their business. God's going to give you a gift to be able to point them in the right direction. They're going to tell you they've been, they're going to tell you all their drama. And then you're just going to be able to just point them in the right direction. And they're going to listen because they know you don't want anything but good for them. Amen. Thank you for being an encourager. Amen. It's easy. I don't know these people. But what I do know is that 
God has put life and death in the power of my. And you can comment on everything. But for every comment you make, I need a hundred encouragements. No, I need to tell, I need to tell them. I need to, I need to. That one comment going to cost you a hundred encouragement. Hold yourself to a higher standard. So she should be ashamed of herself. God dog it. That's 200 encouragements. <laughs> like, you, no, it'll make you be like, Lord, I bless them. Whatever's going on in their life, God, I don't this, but bless. What would happen if the church became the encouragement center of the world? That we could go up to everybody in different communities that don't even believe like us. And just say stuff like this. Watch this. <laughs> My man, what's your name? Alan. Alan, you got a good smile. Now, don't hide it from us now. Now that I done told you, people start going. That smile is attractive to people who don't know you. And that smile is going to help people have a better day. You carry the spirit of joy. God, I, like literally you, I saw you from this. I saw your smile from the stage. Look, he's trying to hold it in. <laughs> but your smile is a secret weapon. Don't ever underestimate it. Don't ever walk in with your head down and not showing who you are. They don't have to know you. That smile goes before you. God has anointed you for that. And he's going to bring joy through just your smile. Amen. It's easy. All right. So this week before you start talking crazy. Y'all know some of y'all owe 10,000 encouragements. If we are going to do what God's called us to do, it's time for us as the church to take our rightful place and let everything that we say be encouragement and help to those who hear it. I just hear Arnold Schwarzenegger in my spirit. I want to bump you up. <laughs> Write this down. This is something my friend told me and it really stuck with me. Don't let the so sun go down without pumping somebody up. Don't let the sun go down without pumping somebody up. This week, every night, I want you to make sure you don't go to sleep without encouraging somebody. A son, a daughter, a friend, a coworker, somebody you do not know. The, the, the person you're going to meet when you go to Chick-fil-A afterwards. Like, no, oh, it's Sunday. <laughs> Kanye, thank you. Close on Sunday. <laughs> but McDonald's, wherever y'all go, don't let the sun go down without pumping somebody up. Okay? Do you know one of the most, I got uh, uh, one of the most powerful forms of pump up is prayer. It's called intercession. You know you can pump somebody out up without their permission? Do you know the only reason I'm standing here is because of the pump up of the prayers of my mother and father? Do you know the only reason that I made it through all the crazy stuff from 2021 to today is because there's people in Transformation Nation that got me on their refrigerator and got me in their phone. Pray for Pastor Mike. Pray for Pastor Natalie. We are winning today publicly because of private pump up. Ugh. There are children that you know you would not be here without the private prayers of your grandmama or your mother or your father. It is those prayers that encourage people. And if you want to encourage yourself, can't talk about it fully today, speak in tongues. You say, I ain't got nobody to encourage me. The Bible says, huh? When you begin to rea santia da basoto, when you begin to work in your heavenly language, you <laughs> it'll pump you up and you don't need nobody. But these are the type of partners that we need, okay? Last two, and then we gotta go home. I'm gonna do this next week. 
Powerful partners have mastered the art of the pump up, number one. And then the second thing, the principles. Do not have a partner that doesn't live with principles. I know we have a lot of partners that live on opinion, but what God wants us to do is have partners that have, everybody say principles. <laughs> Pastor Mike, define principles. This is the M. Alexander version of principles. It's something outside of you. You've given permission to govern you even when you don't want it to. A principle, I'm gonna say it again, is something outside of you. You've given permission to govern you even when you don't want it to. What are the principles that you live by? And what are the principles that your partners live by? Because you will not fall to the ideas, the level or the ideas of people. It's those principles they actually believe. Some people believe it's okay to steal. They think it, I mean, it's just $5. It's just candy. It's, and their principle will show back up, mutated and grown. And it turns into tax fraud. Principles start out baby. But they grow the more you feed them. So, Pastor Mike, give me some principles. I need to like grab, wrap my mind around this. Yeah. Principles, like... Generosity is one of my principles. I live generous, not because I'm a pastor. Before I was a pastor, when I have no money, when, when I would give fake shoes away. <laughs> y'all, y'all gonna judge me. I had the, the, the Ford and Fours, not Jordans, the Fordans. You know the man outside the gas station that'd be like, $25, I'll give you the new Jordans. He'd be like, them look almost real. And then... <laughs> Y'all fake, but some of y'all carrying them fake wooey Vuitton purses in here today. <laughs> wooey, okay. <laughs> Got this new wooey, and what I'm saying is the Gucci, the G's is different ways, and it's two crescent moons, and it's like, this Gucci, you know, baby. It's a yin yang sign. What is that? <laughs> What I'm saying is, generosity, though, as a principle, I always have given. I always wanted to bless people outside of myself. It's the way that we live. Have people taken advantage of that generosity? And it makes you reconsider, like, yo, selfish, stingy. All the things that are coming to my mind are too raw, so I'm going to keep moving. It's just sometimes people will take advantage of you and make you reconsider your purpose because they, they abused the moment. And what I'm asking everybody to do is like, that, that gets eliminated not completely, but it gets cut down when you pick partners with principles. Like there's certain, like if generosity is a principle, I have to have a partner that thinks gratitude is a principle. Because that way I never get burnt out. Because you're actually grateful and you say thank you or what, like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like principles, forgiveness is a principle. And for many Christians, it's an option. But the Bible tells us that forgiveness is a principle. So how in the world do we throw away people? Because they did the worst thing. And how could they? They were a pastor. They were this. They were. Well, I mean, I understand how you could feel that way. But at some point, you're going to have to reconcile inside of yourself that you're no better than anybody else. And maybe yours wasn't public. But if we all had our stuff put on the big screen, the windows and rooms you was crawling out of, the deals that were made and not made, like, come on, y'all. The 
church should have a principle of forgiveness. All I'm saying to you, there's tons of them. Where do you find the principles? In the word of God, not TikTok. Oh my gosh. Just because somebody can prove a hack on life does not mean that that principle is ironclad to last from generation to generation. The word of God is the only thing that we have that has lasted every war, every pandemic, every uprising, and every downfall. This is the infallible word of God that God said, if you will follow the principles inside of this, that's where your business will be successful. Tithing is a principle that I live by. It is not something the church makes me do. If God gives me increase knowing that it was his ability that allowed me to do it, and all he said is I want to know every time I make you expand, you still trust me. That's all tithing is. Do you still trust me even though you got an M in the bank? You got a meal in the bank. You need a meal or you need me. He was like, drop off 100,000 so that I know you still honor me. That's easy for you? Ten hymns. Oh, Jesus, God, I'm blending the ten hymns. I'm going to heal the sick and raise the dead. No, you're not. Only Jesus can do that. But sometimes we feel like we can because we have what man has deemed successful. I don't care how far you have gone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't care how far you go to the top. You will always need the God who reigns on top. Oh, somebody, there should be better claps than that right now. I don't care how big your house is. You still gonna need the one who makes the houses in heaven. I don't care. How many people know your name? You still gonna need the name above every name. So make sure you get partners with principles because watch this, principles are parameters. When I became a pastor, the Holy Spirit gave me some parameters. He said, listen to the people around you. I was like, cool. It's easy to listen to the people around you when ain't nothing cracking off. Like when nothing's going on, five years in the ministry, stuff blows up, stuff starts going everywhere. I get 1,800 speaking re engagement requests for one year in 2000, what was that, 18? Yeah, 2018. 1,800 people wanted me to come and speak at their church and they wanted to pay me. The year before, I would have done it for free. <laughs> I need to be serious, but if you go pay me, <laughs> The Holy Spirit told me in a time of prayer, he said, parameters, take two speaking engagements a month. I said, I only had four all the last year, and I did all of them. <laughs> Y'all be faking. I'm real. I did every single thing. Could you come speak to our dogs and cats? Yes, I will. <laughs> Lift your paws. Like, I was... <sighs> I took... Every engagement. The kennel was a, that was, I was a, I was a hit at the kennel. <laughs> the raw, raw. No, no, no. <laughs> My mind is going crazy right now. But, but then God says, yeah, two engagements a month. God, you know what that means for my wallet? Yeah, two engagements a month. God, do you know what that means for like your platform? He said, I gave it to you. You don't need to explain, expand your platform. I'll give you the platform I want you to be on. Two engagements a month. I messed up and told my partners. Because I could have been in prayer by myself, wrote it down in my journal, and then forgot about it. The way many of us do, God gives us words, but because we don't have any actual partners in our real life that we tell those things to, and we're not accountable to them, then when God tries to remind us of it, he's like, I don't know, maybe that was a dream, maybe it was Taco Bell, maybe it was like, it's not, 
But I told my mom and dad and I told Bree and I told my wife and I told them and then they started coming in. And I'm talking about all the conferences and all the places I paid to go to wanted me to come speak. And the parameters to a month. And I ended that year obeying God. Hear what I just said. I ended that year obeying God. I'm just asking you, do you have partners in your life that will help you obey God? If you do, they will be partners that live by, everybody say principles. Write this last thing down because this is going to encourage you. When you live on principle, you may miss good, but you'll never miss God. I never missed God because I stayed to the principles. Last thing, powerful partners have mastered the art of the presence. Can I help you? If you're going to be a good partner, a power partner, you got to show up. You got to show up. And I'm not talking about being there always physically, but like, like being there. Like, faith, like we live in the easiest time to show up. Because you can literally hit that little FaceTime button. Hey, you can show up without even leaving your home. You can show up through a text message. You can show up. I recently had a friend that went through something very hard. And I wanted to show up and I wanted to be there and I wanted to go and I wasn't able to show up. I literally felt horrible because the part of my relationship with that person is no matter what's going on, you will have my, watch this, presence. Even if I can't fix it, I'll be there. Even if I can't change it, we gonna sit in this together. And I believe the church has lost the art of presence. There are some of y'all that are watching online right now that really what you needed is not the word. You needed a hug. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I know you didn't want to get dressed and you didn't want to get your hair done and your braids getting done this Thursday. And so you didn't want to come out in your bonnet. Real all live excuses that we have. But the truth of the matter is this week, you needed somebody to pump you up. You needed to join a B group. You needed encouragement. You needed somebody to say, are you getting smaller? And you not, but you just wore black and it looks good. <laughs> and that would have given you enough to go to the gym tomorrow. You needed that. But if you're going to have power partners... You need their presence. This was modeled by Jesus when he was going to the Garden of Gethsemane. He had the disciples that was rolling. He even had the 12 that he chose. But for this specific, very hard season he was about to go through, he said, I need y'all three to come with me. I got to do it. I just need y'all to just stand and watch and wait. And even though they were so sorry, that they fell asleep on my mans. I mean, he had to come back a couple times and be like, bro, come on, I'm sweating blood back here. Just stay up. My man's like, yeah. <laughs> but at least he had somebody that was there with their presence. In the darkest moments of our life, we need people's presence okay because watch this write this down our presence reminds them of his presence if you're gonna have power partners they gotta master the art of encouragement pump you up they gotta live by principles but they also have to be there in their presence why because when i see an image bearer when I see somebody who has their own testimony, 
When I see somebody who's walked through infertility or I see somebody who's been bankrupt, but God's blessed them again. When I see somebody who made it out of divorce, when I see somebody whose children is going crazy, but God is still working in them. When I see it, their presence reminds me of his presence because sometimes life is dark. Sometimes our life, the lights are not bright like this. Sometimes it just feels like, what happened? I thought this was good. Turn the LED screen off. I thought everything was bright and I can see remnants of what was there. I know somebody's moving, but I, I, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I, 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 know, I, know, that there's, I know there's people here and things there and and I know, I know I started college, but when I show up and they're thinking about suicide, full ride scholarship, but I show up and I'm, I'm there to pray for them and just let them know, God, I thank you for giving my sister Allie everything she needs. God, I thank you that even though she's walking through a hard season and her boyfriend just broke up with her, I thank you, Father, that you know who she's supposed to be with. She, you, you know who she's supposed to be with, Father, and you know, matter of fact, you know who she is and what you're doing in her right now. And what I do is I turn the light on for somebody that was in darkness. I'm not the light. I point to the light. Ugh. The presence of God is in every situation, but many times it's dark. And when I show up, because I'm a power partner, I remind them of his presence and I turn the light on. Remember God. Remember to pray. Remember that God is for you. As a matter of fact, girl, them eyebrows. Woo God did his thing on you. And when you head to the office, and people are working super hard. I don't want to hear none of your Christian stuff. I don't want to hear all that God is good. I got work to do. No, I wasn't going to tell you God is good. We know that. I, I was just going to remind you. I, I just see that you're under a lot of pressure. I just want to let you know, man, everything that you're going through, I've been praying for you. And um, I don't know, this may seem a little weird, but last night wasn't when I was praying for you, I just felt led to tell you, man, that you were built for this. God has a purpose in your, in your future. He don't have to believe what I believe. But I, I turned the light on so that you could remember the presence of God. When you're starting a fashion company, and I'm trying to do it and make God known in areas that are dominated by other spirits. And it gets discouraging sometimes to keep doing it and it's not selling like you thought it would sell or doing what you thought it would do. Hey, bro, that Lord Primo thing you did, bro, keep doing it. Matter of fact, I'm going to buy everything you do. Matter of fact, I'm going to rock it. I'm going to tell people. Matter of fact, we need to bring the light down. You need to see it real clear. Is this one of your, is this one of your things? Hey, show, hey, show, yeah, show the people. You made this by hand. This ain't something you printed. Lord Primo, Oklahoma, you actually made this shirt. Hold on, you fitted my suit today. You put the represent on the back of my jacket. This is what you do. Keep doing what you're doing. God has his hand on your life. There's more in you. There's more for you. Turn on the light for somebody. It can happen in the gym. Out here doing squats and go on, do whatever you're going to do. See, in this gym, when people are doing physical lifting, a lot of times they're doing it in the dark for vain reasons. It's based off of insecurity. But you could walk into that same spot and say, let me turn the light on. I see God making you strong in the physical, but I see God making you strong in the spirit too. You're going to be a man of God, a man of valor. Heard you getting married soon. You're going to be a man that's faithful. You're going to be a man that leads this household. Turn 
I cannot turn the light on if I'm not in their presence. And every artist knows, every creative knows one of the things that you need more than anything is the right lighting. And some of y'all are coloring in the dark. And God is telling you, I need you to go into that creative community where they don't believe like you believe. And I don't need you to be the light. I need you to turn on the light and point to the light. Okay, let me, all right, let me give you, give me just a little light in the room. John 1, verse 6 and 8, this is where we're going to end. Because they need our presence. Because it reminds them of his presence. There was a man sent from God. Who was he sent from? Who was he sent from? Whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all might believe he himself was not the light he came only as a witness to Jesus the light you are not the source of the light but you turn the light on with your presence I need everybody if you're going to be a partner that's going after kingdom I just wanted to teach you how to pick it you need to pick somebody who's going to pump you up. They're going to encourage you. You need to pick somebody who lives by principles, and you need to pick somebody who is not stingy with their presence. If you find somebody with those three, they're going to have some other stuff that's jacked up. But I'm telling you, if they can encourage you in a storm, if they live by the principles of the word of God, and those people can actually show up when you're in need and apologize when they can't, What's going to happen is you're going to remind them of his presence. And what we're going to be able to do is take dominion wherever God sends us because it's not just us alone. It's somebody with us. Last thing I'll say, don't ever forget you're a part in this partnership. If you become the whole thing, you have lost the art of partnership. It's never all about you. It's never all about you. That's why I'm so grateful for sabbatical. Every time I get to go away, I get so much gratitude because I remember at Transformation Church, even though God's done so many great things, this ain't about me. This ain't about my preaching ability. If I walk away from God, God will raise somebody up, up 10 times better than me. No, oh, Pastor Mike, he's done it every generation. So if you think you the granddad and the only of, please believe God will replace you. But when you approach it with gratitude, I'm just a part of partnering with God. Then you remember to play your role. Because when you play your role, all we do is point to his power. Would everybody stand all over the world? The truth of the matter is you may be the only partner that can lead somebody to his power. And I said this earlier, but I want to say it again right now. Many of you are looking for what you will not become. Pastor Mike, I ain't got no power partner that will pump me up and do all this stuff. Become it. Become somebody who encourages. Become somebody who lives on principles. And become somebody who shows up with their presence. You will attract what you have sown seed for. Hands lifted all over this place. I feel like relationships are about to get a revelation and a revolution. I feel like you're about to go back and evaluate some things. I mean, even while I was speaking, the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. He was telling you some things you need to edit, some things that you need to change, some things that you need to reevaluate. And you're going to become an ambassador of the kingdom of God as you pump people up. And you live by the principles of God and you show up with your presence. Father, I did the assignment you gave me today. I thank you, Father God, for all of these people who have heard your word and now, Father, have action to put with it. God, for the partners that we have been connected to that, Father, have not been for our purpose, would you give us wisdom of how to create new boundaries? Yeah, this is the prayer right here. Give us the wisdom of how to have the conversations to create new normals, Father God, where we let people that we connected to, that were the wrong pit, God, we're asking you to redeem them. 
Could you turn our ashes into beauty? Could you turn what the enemy meant for evil into good? Father God, show us how to be what we have not had. And show us how to live like the light that you are. Today, Father God, I thank you that you would give us a new revelation of partnerships. Thank you for calling us your partner, God. <laughs> thank you for thinking enough of me. I'm grateful, God. Today, Father God, we're not just valuing this kingdom principle, but today we're making a decision to go out of here and live this out. Pray for every couple. Pray for every business partnership. Pray for all friendships. Father God, let there be a renewal of principles and presence and encouragement in the pump up. Father, could the church, maybe not all of them, but Father, could you let something be revived in this church that we would become the most encouraging group of people in this city? That we would become not like for a fad or a fake or a, 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 like a piece of time. But Father, let the spirit of encouragement override all doubt, fear, and discouragement. Let Transformation Nation go into their jobs tomorrow, into their homes today. Father, with their children today and speak life. Father, let our words not fall to the ground because you're holding them up. Bless your people is our prayer today in Jesus name somebody say we agree amen if you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus let me encourage you it's the greatest thing you could ever do it's the thing that took me from a liar a manipulator somebody who was addicted to pornography and it gave me the freedom that I was looking for and before everybody starts leaving because you might distract somebody from the moment they need I need everybody to hear me Wendy's is gonna be there but somebody's battling for their life right now. And I need, I need some people to pump somebody up in prayer right now. Could you start praying if you know what's going on right now? Somebody's at your home and you've been, you don't even know why there's been a war for your life. And somebody's in this room right now and you're saying, what I really need is salvation. I need God to be my partner. And he, I want to let you know he's always been there. Today, we're just turning on the light. All we're letting you know is his presence is here and available for you. And some of y'all, that thing you're feeling in your stomach or your chest or that, 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 that's the Holy Spirit drawing you to him. Saying, come to me. I want to affirm you. I want to speak life over you. I want to change your name. It didn't make me a perfect man, but man, it put me on the road of progression. And today I believe that there are many people under the sound of my voice that today is going to mark a brand new day in your life. I don't care if you've been with God for a lot of years, but that thing has become stale. Today is a fresh and a new season for you to walk with your God. On the count of three, if that's you, in the room and online, I just want you to shoot your hand up loud and proud. I want you to be excited about it because this is the whole reason our church exists. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I encourage you that it doesn't matter who's around you. This is going to change you and your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Three, shoot your hand up in the air if you want to accept Jesus. I see you, my brother. I see you, my sister. Come on there, people. I see you. Uh, Transformation Church, can we give God praise? There's people online. God bless you. Hallelujah. Why our church exists. And for everybody that maybe didn't have the courage at that moment to lift your hand, but you lifted your heart. We're about to pray a prayer. And I don't know if you mean it, but you do. If you want to invite Jesus into your heart, be your Lord and Savior. Transformation Church, we're family. Nobody prays alone. So we're all about to pray this prayer together. But for some people, this is your day of salvation. Can everybody say, God. Thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I give you my life. I make you Lord over my life. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again just for me. And today, I want to be your partner. Change me, renew me, transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give God a shout of praise everywhere? Oh, come on. People just gave their life to Jesus.
The title of the message is How to Pick a Partner. You just pick the best one. At Transformation Church, we believe in the power of prayer. The team is coming right now. We're about to dismiss service, but if you need prayer for anything, if you need prayer for situations, family, healing in your body, whatever it is, we're going to pray and I'm going to dismiss everybody. But this week, I want you to go encourage. Don't let the sun go down without pumping somebody up. Father, bless these people. And Holy Spirit, draw people to this altar that need prayer and even in the chat. Father, we thank you for what you did today. And I thank you that you're building on it every week. We give you glory. We give you honor. and We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go out and live a transformed life. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. Our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And if you would like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or visit us on our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons as well. Our service begins every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.